Okay, we're going to be discussing Chapter 8 of Johnson, Ethics, Rights, and Values Without the Heat. Uh, I'm going to preface this by saying I did skip over the section on religion, because I feel that is too controversial, and it's not something I want to, not a topic I want to broach. So if you want to read that on your own, feel free to do so. But without further ado, let's begin. So we're going to start with ethics and ethical communities. Ethics as a subject is nothing more than labels given by a community as to what behavior or behaviors are right, which are wrong. Contingencies define ethical values, not the other way around. The majority of ethical behavior is governed by law, which is created by societies, whereas others are taught <coughs> by the community, communities themselves, such as the school system or within the home. Not committing assault and battery is a law-governed ethical principle. Assisting a lost child is a taught ethical value, such as what you'd learn in school as uh, to what is right. Now we're going to move on to rights. What are they? And where do they come from? <clears throat> According to Johnson, rights are just verbal behavior. They are focused around what does and doesn't serve as a positive reinforcement and or negative, re negative punishment or positive punishment within a community. Now, as an EMT in training, if I see you injured, you have the right to obtain your refused health care services from me. <clears throat> if we modify this into APA terms, you can either receive the reinforcement of gauze from me to stop any bleeding or you may refuse the enforcer and continue to bleed, which I honestly don't recommend whatsoever. Rights and laws governing rights, the laws governing these rights are dictated by the major by the majority within a community. That is, whatever the majority of people want within a society, that those are the rights and the laws that are going to exist within that community. From where do rights originate? Uh, we may say, I have the right to do whatever. Rights originate from the community itself. People may think they can do as they please, but the community has the final say. Changes in laws or rights are determined by the community. If we look at the chart here on the right, we have the community. Uh, we have, under that, we have the employer says school as an intermediary. Then we have the self, friends, and family. The community tells the employer slash school which rights they have and what laws they must abide by. They in turn create their own law, laws and rules for that particular branch of society. This is brought down to the, to the self, you, your friends, and your family. Essentially, this is all interconnected with separate branches or factions, if you will, within the community. Does that make sense? Now we move on to values. What are they, and are they scientific? What are values? Values are behaviors based on environmental circumstances. If we're out getting coffee together and you find someone passed out in the bathroom, it'd be reinforcing for you to alert me as the EMT as signalizes a value in our society. In behavior analysis, rights and values are almost indistinguishable, but value-based reinforcement is typically easier to determine. That is, you're getting positive reinforcement from doing what is right within a society. To help distinguish the, the two, I've created two equations. Rights are the integration of community values plus personal values, whereas values are the integration of the sum of community values, your personal values, and the environmental contingencies. Yes, note here that the main difference is the environment, right? Your, the environment you're in is going to influence the values that you're expressing based on what's going on.
or values beyond science? Honestly, it depends. If values are approaches for behavior, they're quantifiable and thus accessible scientifically. However, if values are looked at from a mentalistic standpoint, they're arguably beyond science. Although this is a behavior analysis course, I honestly look at values from a mentalistic standpoint. However, if we're looking at miserable behavior, then they're indeed quantifiable. However, as I said, I'm going to lean more towards the mentalistic viewpoint as I don't agree that behavior analysis is truly applicable to everything. It's a bit too extreme for my uh, taste. Now, taking the heat out of arguments. According to Johnson, if we approach values as fraught behavior, arguments can be avoided. If we begin value-based discussions from a, using a bottom-up approach, what is the history of the value? Where is it learned? When was it learned? From, once we have that information, we can move on up to why is this value important to the person. And from there, we move up to how would the overarching community change if the value were changed. In mathematical terms, we have a uh, verbal argument is a function of verbal behavior plus the history plus the personal importance of the value plus community change. <clears throat> Changing values, of course, is going to change the community as a whole. Regardless of whether it's your personal value or Bob's personal value, right? Since values are dictated by the community, uh, any change is going to have an overarching effect. This in turn leads us to our question for discussion. Think about the ethical, ethical communities of which you remember. Where do the rights and values intersect? Where do, where do they diverge? Why do these intersections and diversions occur? I guess I'll use myself as an example here. Being an EMT in training, we have the overarching values of society, which is to save lives. Simple as that. However, within the EMT community, we have our own set of, set of values that determines how we go about saving lives. What's correct? What's wrong? For example, uh, if someone has a DNR, which is a do not resuscitate order, that intersects with the value of life saving as an EMT. Because if someone has a DNR, we cannot save their life, period. Now, in terms of divergence, there are certain things that EMTs are and paramedics are allowed to do that diverge from what personal values we may have. For example, if someone cannot breathe, we might perform a tracheotomy, which involves cutting open the throat to create an airway. This goes against my personal value, is that I don't go around opening up people's airways on a daily basis, because that's not a overarching community value. <laughs> Though this is technically a value to me as an EMT, is what I can and cannot do to save a life, it's a divergence from what I would personally do. Why do these intersections and divergence occur? Simply put, you have the overarching community, right? Then you have the EMT community. The EMT community is going to have its own set of values. Um, and determine what's important, what we can and cannot do, right? This is going to be a direct diversion from what society deems is right. Does this make sense? Uh, you may also see this in other settings, um, such as schools, uh, the lawyer career path. Um, even as a behavior analyst, you might see um, diversions and intersections of our societal values personal and personal values and values as behavior analysts. I am curious as to what um, you're all going to determine. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Um, can't wait to read your um, responses to the discussion questions.
Uh, here are my references. Uh, Johnson, Radical Behaviors and Behavior Practitioners, uh, 2014. Yeah, thank you for watching.